Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word Is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Now let's address race the same way we address sex. Well, I would say it's the same thing, man. I, I would say. Do you hate white people? Um, that's that's a that's. I mean, you, we, yes, my instinct is to say yes, but he, I don't hate because you, I don't you hate white person. I don't hate white person, white person, right. white person. It's singular. You qualified your misogyny that you know you said you're better with it. You've got a system that you understand sex and and women with. It's your it's your own. It's based in truth. Look, man. Ooh. Black people, um, I, I, I don't like to think in terms of, like, being a victim and being black, dude. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I try to get white people to understand, Mark, is that um, y y y white is a, is, a, is a fluent concept. It's an idea. White to us, and I, I've said this a few times, but here's what white is to us. The decency that nature has given the Jews in their plight, the decency is to have a villain in both plates. Moses, there was Pharaoh. That nigga looked like Yul Brenner. <laughs> Yul Brenner was the evil force holding you down. Yeah. And God freed you. <laughs> God <laughs> said, no, Jews, you must go. Yeah. Okay? Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Then it's the Holocaust. Mm. Hitler. He was a bad one. Hitler and his crew were the it, it was e after the war it was against the law you can't even have the mustache no more yeah you can't even rock that yeah you rock that it's not a law but it's an understanding it's, it's not, you just don't rock it sure. that nigga yeah. is the devil yeah okay right. that mustache is the devil right hitler then the devil right so that what that enables you to do is move on mm -hmm. move it move, enables you to move on okay meaning i i don't have to hate every german I don't have to be bogged down. After the Holocaust, being a fucking Nazi was a criminal. To this day, if they find out you used to be a Nazi, you get fucked over. You can't even apologize. Yeah. Oh, no, only put a couple They're of ovens. No, no, no. You're done. That's right. Okay? Even if you're 100 years old, you're yep. going to jail. They, you're, you're fucked. Yeah. That, 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 which is great for the spirit of being Jewish. It's great. It's just like, we went through this. Yeah, we went through this. But we know our, we know what exactly what happened. Yeah. We know exactly how many people it happened to. And we know exactly who the fuck did it. Yeah. So it enables you to have a chapter in a book. Yeah. Uh, when I start off with white people, I say, look, white is, is the only thing we got from slavery. We don't have a, a we have a, a, a finished date, questionable start date, questionable amount of people that died, uh, questionable effect on our minds. Um, when we were freed, it was like, bye, nigger. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you you live, you've been living this way 400 years. Now we expect you to live uh, wonderfully now. And uh, what we did to you is not criminal. And, and the only thing left is your skin so you have the skin color of the enemy so every white person is hitler's mustache really to my to my gut every white skin, all white skin is that on some level on some level um, really yeah um this is how deep white is hey when's your family get here got here in 1906 uh first person straight off the boat from italy and uh, now I'm calling you a nigger, like I'm better than you. Are you serious? My family's been here since 1619, bitch. Making this country wealthy because it's got free labor. It's just collecting money. We, are you fucking serious? And we get a hard, to a hard time, and you get here, your skin's white, and you treat me like shit? You motherfucker. Okay, salute to my brother Issa for inspiring this video here. And people, this video is about the history of buffalo wings. The history of buffalo wings and the black man who created them. Now this man's name is John Young, but unfortunately, 
some white folks, some Italians to be exact, jacked it from him and took credit for buffalo wings from John Young. I know y'all know what you're thinking. We can't have nothing. We can't have nothing. But I do believe that black people in America have created everything that was needed to function in everyday life. From the iron to the car, to the chair, to the airplane, toaster, all that. I believe that black people invented all of these things until proven otherwise. People can think whatever they want. I'm not going to go debate nobody about it. I don't care who has the documentation. But what I believe coincides with American history and white people stealing, that we know is a fact. Now, the brother who invented Buffalo Wings, black man named John Young. John Young is from Alabama, and he grew up on a farm. He was one of 14 children. At some point when he was a teen, John Young left Alabama. He moved north to Buffalo, New York, like many black people from the Deep South were doing at that time, to look for work. When he got to Buffalo, he started cooking and selling food that he was familiar with from the Deep South, which was ribs and wings. So he cooked his wings and ribs. People loved them, and he sold them to the black community. Before you know it, everybody was buying wings from John Young. They loved his food. Now, what happened was at some point, John Young met a traveling boxer named Sam Anderson. Now, Sam Anderson, since he's a traveling boxer, he liked John Young's food. And Sam Anderson told him about carryout restaurants in Washington, D.C., who were making money selling wings slathered in this tangy, sweet, spice, tomato-based sauce. People in D.C. know this as mumbo sauce. Some people call it mumbo sauce. Mumbo sauce, okay? Washington, D.C. thing. Uh, of course, now in D.C., people are still eating and using mumbo sauce. The Chinese are making millions of dollars off of it. It's in every carryout in D.C. You know, back in the day, in the year of 1962, there was a shop called Wings and Things in Washington, D.C. that was known for selling this mumbo sauce. Now, there's a debate between who actually created mumbo sauce or mumbo sauce between Chicago and D.C. I'm not in that. There is a debate. Who really created the mumbo sauce? Was it Chicago or was it D.C.? Of course, somebody from D.C. going to say, no, nah, that's ours. But let me get into it. Now, when this traveling boxer, Sam Anderson, told uh, John Young about the idea of this mumbo sauce, he liked it. He liked it. And what happened was John Young, he took a trip to Jamaica. Now, when he went to Jamaica, he was inspired by a trip to Jamaica, and he was inspired by the tropical fruits in Jamaica. So what John Young did was when he came back, he added tropical fruits to this mumbo sauce. And he started dipping his wings in the sauce and selling them. And as soon as he started dipping, I mean, people already loved his wings. They were buying them like crazy in his black community. But when he dipped his wings in this new sauce that he made, uh, it just took flight. It just went off. You know what I mean? In a handwritten autobiography that he left to his daughter, he wrote, The first day I opened the doors, I realized I had created a monster. People came from everywhere in droves to try the wings with mumbo sauce. John Young, he served his wings whole. He sold, served whole wings, 10 wings for a dollar in a little cardboard container. He didn't believe in tampering with the wings or cutting them up. He served them whole. That's the original way, Okay. And in Southern tradition, he also served them breaded and seasoned. So you didn't have to have sauce in them to enjoy them. You could have them either way. And he would dip them in the sauce and they would just come out smoking. And people went crazy over them. People went crazy over them. Now, at that time, John Young's whole breaded wings were not what Buffalo became known for. They were not yet. But when he dipped them in his sauce, this was the original Buffalo Wing. Buffalo, New York, Buffalo Wings, John Young, that's it. John Young created the Buffalo Wing in Buffalo, New York. And at the time, black-owned restaurants in those days were rarely given credit for anything unless it was barbecue. That was the only thing 
that they say in history that they gave black restaurants credit for. Now here's the beef. There was also a white restaurant, an Italian restaurant, called the Anchor Bar. Now this Anchor Bar, Italian owned, and these people who owned this Anchor Bar were trying to take claim to the Buffalo Wing. They say it's theirs. It was owned by some people named Teresa, Frank, and Dominic Bellissimo. Now one version of the story is, Teresa and Frank were working in a restaurant one night when their son Dominic, he went back into the kitchen. He asked his mother if she can create something a little different for him and his friends. And he and uh, she used some wings to make a meal that had been mistakenly delivered to them. Now, in this delivery that came, they actually meant to order backs and necks to make spaghetti sauce. But the shipment came and it was wings. So she created wings that day by mistake. And this is what they're saying is the original Buffalo wing. So Teresa Bellissimo and the Anchor Bar are saying, this is how and why we created Buffalo wings. It was by mistake. And I created them. We wanted to try something different because they sent the wrong order in. But John Young and his family are saying, no way. That's absolute baloney. John Young is like, no. They said that these wings were made with no epiphanies or accidents, you know, in the kitchen, like these Italians are saying. They said, no, no, that's not true. John Young and his family said these wings were created here for us, by us. And they said the Bellissimos at Anchor Bar knew about the wings because John Young was serving these wings to crowds a mile away from their place. He was serving them the crowds of people coming in and out a mile away. Even celebrities were coming in and they were sitting back watching. They were sitting back watching. John Young's wife, Christine Young, she told the Southern Law Review that she remembered Frank Bellissimo coming down to the restaurant after hours to jaw and talk to John Young about these great wings that he served and that he had and sold at his store. In addition, Frank Bellissimo had went to a dinner where John Young was the caterer. He tasted his food, his wings, they was fire. He admired them, and that's why he got in touch with John Young. John Young's daughter also said, I don't know how many occasions my father said the people who owned Acre Bar at the time had visited his restaurant and had his wings. There's a longtime Anchor Bar manager, the Italian place that's trying to take claims to the wings, named Ivano Toscani, passed away in 2018, is who uh, disputed John Young and his family saying that they had something to do with the wings at the Anchor Bar. They said that all the credit goes to Teresa Bellissimo. That don't even sound right. But of course, credit goes to Teresa Bellissimo for making the wings after they took the recipe from John Young. This is where they got it from. So to you, to them, yeah, she's the first one to make them for you. But that ain't where they came from. OK. There are also people who could verify that John Young was selling wings as early as the year 1961 and the Buffalo Wings by the year of 19, by or before the year of 1964, at the latest, maybe even earlier. But on record, John Young's Wings and Things, which is the name of his spot, they didn't file for a business license until the year, year of 1966. So at the time, it was common for small black-owned businesses to exist in a gray area. You know how we have to do at that time due to what? the religion of white supremacy, and hardcore racism. Of course we had to do that. Setting up a business in the year of 1966 in Buffalo, New York. Imagine how bad it is in 2024, how disgusting leading white people in Buffalo is. I keep telling y'all, it's in all my videos, the worst white people that I've met come from where? You know, I sound like a broken record. I'm talking about as far as law enforcement. Upstate New York to include Buffalo, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Florida. I'm going to always stand by that. But anyway, imagine trying to get a business license in 1964 or 66 as a black man. 
Could you imagine the smug faced racist white folks at the office behind the counter telling you all kind of dumb stuff? Oh, well, you you got to fill it out in blue. You did it in black. Oh, yeah, it's in black, but you have to make three copies. You know the stuff that they do to us to frustrate us to the point where we don't even want to come back. They do that to this day. In the year 1966, that is the first on record written that the Anchor Bar claimed they started selling wings at any kind, the year 1966. So in ni- this place that the Italians own called the Anchor Bar in 1966, this is the first time that they have wings at any of any kind on their menu. So, of course, they're going to say, well, look, you didn't even have a business life. You didn't even have on record. You know, people want to look at the statistics and the records and, the, you know, the vital stuff and all that. They say, oh, well, the Italians at Anchor Bar, they were they were open in 1966. John Young didn't even have a place in 1966. Yes, he did. He had to do business like a black man. You know, they know how this goes, but they use these things against us. Well, look, you didn't even have an open place. How can you be the original Buffalo Wing guy? We know how this goes, people. Here's another historical fact for you. They checked some old newspaper features. A 1969 Buffalo Courier Express feature about this ankle bar, which is the place that's owned by the Bellissimos, the Italians. They didn't even mention wings at all. Okay, in this feature, they didn't mention wings at all. Buffalo wings, as big of a deal as they were. They didn't even mention them at all. But the man, Frank Bellissimo, the owner, he claims that they were selling 3,000 pounds of wings within a week in the first month of serving these wings. So if you sold 3,000 pounds of wings within the first week, don't you think if the news, when the newspaper comes out, you're going to you're going to be like, yeah, this is what we got. Look, wasn't even mentioned 1969, but a 1966 advertisement. In the Courier Express by Buffalo History Museum, a librarian named Cynthia Van Ness, it does list barbecue chicken in 1966 when they went back and checked. Barbecue chicken. So, okay, people, how does that sound? First off, some Italians who are claiming anything barbecue. First off, barbecue wings when there are black people right there in town. That's like us claiming fettuccine. That's like us claiming some fettuccine Alfredo type stuff. Come on. Black people make chicken. We do everything with chicken. That's what we do. Cut it out. Even the Chinese. They it, Come on, man. Let, cut it out. Cut, cut out. the. Come on, y'all. Come on, man. You've never been to an authentic Italian restaurant and looked at uh, 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 Italian food, which is buffalo wings is something that's created by Italians. You've seen that. Buffalo wings on the menu or even a side order. Come on, man. Come on, man. Buffalo wings, chicken wings, chicken, fried chicken, stuff like that of any kind. It comes from black people It's from the South. Now, this is what ultimately happened with the brother John Young. Due to the riots and racial, racial tension in Buffalo in the summer of 1967, John Young moved out of Buffalo for 10 years because he felt as though it was not safe for him and his family. So remember, those riots, the year 1967, okay, John Young moved away for 10 years. When he returned to Buffalo around a little before 1980, by then, by then, uh, uh, Buffalo Wings were a worldwide frenzy. I mean, Buffalo Wings were big time by then. The Italians at the Anchor Bar took all the credit for inventing these buffalo wings. They took all the credit. He left, had to come back. He did get back into the wing business when he returned, but he was very heartbroken that these people took all the credit for something that he started, and they never acknowledged it. He often told his story to people. He was very vocal about it, but by then it was like these people had the wave. They took the momentum, and they invented them. I guess it's like one of the things where people don't care about the truth, They only care what they see or what's in front of them. And in this case, what they want to believe. But the black community knows and they know who invented Buffalo Wings. In the year of 1996, John Young told a Buffalo food critic named Janice Okun when they interviewed him. 
He said, I am the true inventor of the buffalo chicken wings. It hurts me so bad that other people take credit. So John Young's final restaurant and closed in the year of night. And I'm sorry, in the 1980s. I don't know the exact year. And his brother stopped selling wings in the 90s. OK. Buffalo wings went on a worldwide frenzy. Uh, and no credit was given to the man, John Young, who created them. Ain't that something? John Young created Buffalo Wings. John Young passed away in the year of 1996, I believe. I should know that, y'all. He passed away in the year of 1996. I believe that's when John Young passed away. So Buffalo Wings went wild. This black man didn't create any credit, get any credit for it, but it got kind of revived when there's a man named Mark Moscato. Now, this man named Mark Moscato is the founder of a tour company called Buffalo Bike Tours. And what happened is he learned about John Young and the story of John Young in the year 2019. And he became obsessed with the idea of reviving the mumbo sauce wings or the original Buffalo wing. He did his research and he was finally able to catch up with people. He got in contact with John Young's daughter, uh, uh, daughter, Linda Brown Young. She's his daughter. OK, now the Buffalo bike tours uh, guy, Mark Moscato, he wanted to include the Buffalo wings in the original mumbo sauce on his historical ride through Buffalo for his bike tour. So he hooked up with Linda Brown Young. John Young's daughter, and now she does the wings for the tours, trying to revive this family name, this family tradition. Her mother, Christine Young, who's the wife of John Young, who created Buffalo Wings, she wasn't really feeling the idea of her daughter getting back into this, and she was very concerned for her daughter because she believes that her late husband's years of restaurant battles and his long struggle to get credit for his wings had driven him to an early grave, and she didn't want to see her daughter suffer the same fate. When she was asked to talk about her husband's wings many years later, Christine Young, even many years later, she couldn't handle it, and she just broke down into tears. She can't handle it because she knows what these people did to her husband and what he went through trying to take credit, get credit for what he created. But his daughter, Linda Brown Young, feels that it's important to keep her father's story and tradition going. And that's what she's trying to do as best she could. She used to make this original sauce and wings for her father as a little girl. And she remembers the recipes. So she's right back into it, doing it for these Buffalo tours. And she told people on the tour groups that there were people waiting in lines around the corner trying to get these buffalo wings that her father invented. She says that these are the original wings, all connected, no drums and flats. That's how the original buffalo wing is. So there you go, people. That's the story. The brother John Young created the buffalo wings. Worldwide frenzy. Black folks, we can't have nothing. And notice, people, in this story, this black man, John Young, had to leave Buffalo due to the race riots in America. What people know is the long, hot summer of 1967, more than 150 race riots all across the country due to some white supremacist knuckle-dragging beasts and their systemic racism. They were mad and upset, so this is what they decided to do. And again, people, you have to remember, they have the police working with them. That's part of their community, Okay. That's another reason why John Young didn't get the credit that he deserved for his invention in Buffalo. He had to leave to protect his family. OK. And this was stolen from him and taken from him from Italians who stole the idea. They freaked that the man often went to his place, liked his food. He seen that he had it popping over there on the other side of town where the black people live. Lines everywhere. Celebrities coming in some time to get these wings. He tasted them. Admired it, loved it, stole it, said it his own. Didn't even acknowledge it. And his people are sticking to that story. They all passed away now, but they're sticking to it. And it just sounds absurd that Italians actually created buffalo wings. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. But people, get in the comments. Let me know what you know about this, what you think about this, how you feel about this. Salute to the brother John Young and his daughter and his family. Anyway, easy.